Secret Treasures! Hi Hello. everyone and welcome back. Um, so today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than we usually do. You know, we like to do a lot of comedy stuff and such, but today we want to talk about um, a place that we actually got to go see about a year ago, and that is the Appomattox Courthouse. And um, there's a lot of history there, and it's kind of a story about the Civil War and the end of the Civil War. So we just kind of want to tell it in you know, uh, the story, how it went, and this, uh, just the whole the whole story that went with this place. And then at the end, we'll tell you some highlights of what we liked when we went to go actually see the place. Right, and it's not actually a courthouse. I mean, there was a courthouse there, but the entire name of the place mm -hmm. in Virginia is just called Athematix Courthouse. Yes. Yeah. Just so you are aware. Right. Um, so we're going to tell you the events that happened at the Appomattox um, Surrender. Um... Malice towards none. That was the sentiment that canopied over the ending of the American Civil War. It was an ending like none other and was the beginning of a new future for our country. To quote Abraham Lincoln's um, second inaugural address near the end of the Civil War on March 4, 1865, with malice towards none, with clarity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne on the battle, for his widow and his orphan, and do all who may achieve and cherish, cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and all nations. When you think about the Civil War, you probably think of Gettysburg, Bull Run, or the Emancipation Proclamation. Today, we're going to talk about the very end of the war that you may or may not know much about. The Battle of Appomattox Courthouse fought in Appomattox County, Virginia on the morning of April 9th, 1865 was one of the last battles of the American Civil War, 1861 to 1865, before Lee's surrender. It was the final engagement of Confederate General-in-Chief Robert E. Lee and his Army of the Northern Virginia before it surrendered to the Union Army under the commanding general of the United States, Ulysses S. Grant. Once Lee knew he was close to losing the war, he and three aides accompanying him set out to meet Grant at 8 o'clock in the morning. He declared on that day, There is nothing left for me to do but go and see General Grant, and I would rather die a thousand deaths. Nonetheless, Lee dressed in a new gray uniform with a red sash around his waist, which he buckled a sword onto. He had his boots brightly polished. It was said that he told a member of his staff, I have probably to be General Grant's prisoner, and I thought I must make my best appearance. Grant received the letter Lee had sent ahead of him just before noon, and later said that the severe headache from which he had been suffering had melted away at that point. In his reply, Grant magnanimously allowed Lee to choose the location at which Grant would receive his surrender. It was here that the terms of the surrender and choices made by these honorable men began writing our new history with the caring and binding the nation's wounds spoken of by Abraham Lincoln. We'll take a look at these three men briefly for the highlights of the war's end. Abraham Lincoln. He met with General Grant and William T. Sherman shortly before the war's end, with knowledge that the South was losing and the North was about to win. Lincoln stressed that any surrender terms should preserve the Union and have no malice towards anyone. General Ulysses S. Grant. He was a fighter and had the choice to require any terms of surrender that he deemed best. He followed the sentiments of the President up to the last minute. As said before, he permitted Lee to pick the location for surrender. The small village of Appomattox Courthouse was selected and Lee chose a solid brick dwelling, which was occupied by a man named Wilmer McLean. His terms were a simple gentleman's agreement. 1. The soldiers were to turn over their arms, artillery, and public property to the officer appointed by Grant. 2. This done, each officer and man were allowed to return to their home and were not to be disturbed by the United States authority as long as they observe their parole and the laws in force where they may reside. He let Lee's defeated men go home rather than treat them like traitors. General Robert E. Lee. He had choices to make. He could 
surrender. He could not surrender and fight on with more loss of life that had no chance of winning. Or follow the train of thought of Confederate soldiers and Jefferson Davis, that the soldiers and civilians turned to guerrilla warfare that could have gone on for a very long time. Again, more loss of life. Lee surrendered and Grant offered the best terms of surrender ever heard of. He asked for one more thing for his soldiers. He explained to Grant that many of these men were farmers and would need their horses to farm when returning home. He asked if they could take their horses and Grant agreed. All other times when one side of war surrenders, the other side takes many things such as food, supplies, documents, and prisoners of war. Grant also gave each Southern soldier a parole pass to make sure they would not take up arms against the United States. Grant's instructions were that these passes could aid the former Confederates during their journey home, allowing them to use federal transportation, ships and trains where available, or to draw food and supplies from federally controlled stations in the South. Approximately 30,000 blank passes were printed at the Clover Hill Tavern. After the Confederates surrendered their military equipment, they were eligible to receive the pass. When Lee came out of the house and let all his men know that he had surrendered, all of his soldiers were told to lay down their guns, and after they did, the whole town was full of 25,000 guns lined up and down all the streets. So that was what happened at Appomattox Courthouse. Um, now, I we've heard a story from the guy who actually worked there, and I'm sure he told it a much better job much, with more details, and you could actually go there and listen to those people who know Very so good. much about it. Yes. But that was our uh, version of how we would tell the story. Um, hope you enjoyed that and learned something new about, you know, something that we don't talk a lot about, or at least uh, some people don't talk a lot about, about like in the Civil War, the, the Appomattox surrender. The very end, yeah. Yeah, um, so we did go there, and it was really cool to see. Um, the town, it's still there. Not all of the houses are there. And the actual courthouse, um, apparently, didn't it burn down, I think, and they did rebuild it at one point? Yeah, the actual courthouse, they did. Yeah, and also, um, the, the town is pretty much untouched because um, the railroad was not chosen to go past that area. Um, and many towns where it did, they were able to build up, um, and that sort of thing. But because it didn't come there, um, it was kind of, you know, nobody really did anything with it until yeah, they were of, able to come and, you know, preserve it. So it was kind of neat right. because everyone just kind of left because there was nothing yeah. happening there. Yeah, really, there's just the courthouse, um, there's like a, a store, and then just some houses all around that area, and then like the town street. It was really cool to see and learn all about that. Um, and actually, the McLean house, um, where they did the surrendering in, in their house, um, they actually, for some reason, they decided whoever was in charge of that whole whole place took it down at one point years ago, brick by brick, and they put it in a pile because they were going to move it to, like, a museum or something. So it was just sitting it was in the Washington, yard. Washington, D.C. Yeah. They were going to send it there. So they, they just had these piles of bricks and, and wood and whatever, in um in the yard and it was there for years and it got deteriorated and we, no I don't think anybody really knows why they didn't really move it um they just didn't get to it yeah so years later it was all under all this dirt and stuff so they finally somebody else I guess came and um, removed all that dirt and took them out and so from pictures and stuff they rebuilt it which so it's not the original house there is original brick and wood and stuff like that but a lot of it is not original just because it just deteriorated into right, the ground. Right. So um, that was that was um, that was interesting. Um, but yeah, definitely if you ever get a chance to go to Appomattox, Virginia, that was um, a really interesting place to go see. And hope you enjoyed our the way we told it today. You know, I know it was a little bit different than we usually do, but um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, and now it is time for the news. <laughs> Are ice skaters better drivers? Well, no one knows, but it's a thought-provoking question, isn't it? I like where you're going with that. 
You know, should we be allowed to swim in shark-infested waters? Maybe they're just misunderstood. Well, no, there actually is an answer to that, and it's no. Definitely no. Not a good idea. Is gasoline a substitute for olive oil? What? No! Is tying your shoelaces together really a bad idea? And now it is time for the Taylor Treasure Box. See what we get today, okay? Let's see here. All right, I get a truth and a lie. Okay. I have to yodel, which reminds me that uh, the Larry Boy. Has anybody seen that? That what was it? The the yodel. Napper. Yodo napper. Yeah, yodo napper. <laughs> uh, napper. <laughs> um, okay. Mm. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Give us your best yodel. Yodo lulu. Wait, that's not it. <laughs> so that's opera. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. Yodo lulu Yeah, it's like in the it's in the, like the throat. It's like a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a with about seven years of practice, it could be good. Yeah, I how how exactly do they do like? <laughs> oh, <laughs> kind of. Yay. Okay, Yay. We won't be going in that career field. Well, if you're around goats, you're gonna need to know how to do that. Goats. I think you're supposed to know how to yodel when you're around goats. Never heard that before. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, I have either eaten paper or a tissue. What? Wait, no. Uh, no. Paper. Uh, yes, you're right. Yeah. Paper. Never what, a tissue. What? What? We, years ago, wasn't it that edible paper we ate one time? No, I ate regular paper, too, when I was a kid, because... Yeah, we wanted to try it. We're like, it's just wood. Yeah, so just we, want to see what it tasted like. Yeah, we ate, we ate so, a little paper. paper. Yeah, it was a Fiber. little experiment. It actually didn't taste too bad. It kind of tasted like nothing. I don't know. It yeah. wasn't that bad. I mean, it wasn't flavored, so. Yeah, not really. <laughs> um, so, again, hope you enjoyed this episode. And it was just a really cool story to see how it all ended so peacefully. And It's never happened, like, yeah. ever. In, like, what did it take? 30 minutes, I think, for the Grant and Lee to yeah, and to give figure it out? That whole malice towards none, to give everything back and not have them be, like, traitors was yeah crazy to just let all the hate hate go um so make sure to subscribe and make sure to give us a comment and a like and actually after you subscribe make sure to press the bell so you get all of our videos in your notifications box and we'll see you next time bye, bye. hey guys thanks for watching that episode if you'd like good to job subscribe for down watching here you can subscribe Subs and if you'd like to watch a random episode you can click over here right down here and if you'd like to check out our channel that would be awesome we got a bunch of videos on there for you to check out and we see you next time